Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the newest episode of the Pokemon Safari Guide. I will be your guide today, and we will be going over one of my all-time favorite Pokemon, Bisharp. I used Bisharp in our Season 1 of the Competitive Draft League, and I almost, almost used Bisharp within my Dark-type gym in the most recent season of the Competitive Draft League. If you are not watching our Competitive Draft League, you definitely need to because it has some of the most entertaining content on the internet. Bisharp is Galar number 246 and National number 625. On the left, the non-shiny sprite, and on the right, the shiny sprite. Bisharp is the sword blade Pokemon, and it evolves from Ponyard at level 52. Its egg group is human-like, and it was first introduced in Pokemon Black and White. So it's really not that new of a Pokemon, but it's also not that old. Height, 5 foot 3 inches. Weight, 154.3 pounds. Weighs about as much as I did my senior year of high school. Gender ratio, it's slightly skewed towards male, but not by very much. Typing, it is primary dark type, secondary steel type, which means that it has a four times weakness to fighting and then a two times weakness to both ground and fire. However, Bisharp has two immunities in poison and psychic, and it has resistances in normal, flying, rock, ghost, steel, grass, ice, dragon, and dark. All of these resistances, I think, make up for the four times in fighting. You have two immunities to both poison and psychic, which poison really helps in your doubles teams. Um, being immune to that so that you can get Sludge Wave off is very useful. But then on top of that, you have a resistance to eight types, eight different types, and two immunities. Although Bisharp is not really a defensive build, but that does help. The two resistances definitely do help. It has three abilities in Defiant, Inner Focus, and its hidden ability, which is Pressure. In black, it's said that it leads a group of Ponyard. It battles to become the boss, but will be driven from the group if it loses. And in white, it is stated that it pursues prey in the company of a large group of Ponyard. Then Bisharp finishes off the prey. So this is kind of like a mafia type feel that they're kind of throwing out. There's one Bisharp at the top, and then there's a whole bunch of Ponyard that just do whatever he says. Unless he stabs them, or one of the Ponyards stab him in the back, evolve, and become leader of the group. Which in Sword, they address that. It's accompanied by a large retinue of Ponyard. Bisharp keeps a keen eye on its minions, ensuring none of them even think of double-crossing it. In S.H.I.E.L.D., violent conflicts erupt between Bisharp and Fracture over places where sharpening stones can be found. This is just another one of those interesting little facts that they threw at us. Um, I like it when they throw these facts about two different species of Pokemon going at it over something as simple as sharpening stones. But the fact that they're adding this little uh, this element of mingling between the species that you really only see in the anime and not so much in the games it it heightens the the overall playability bisharp's first ability is definitely by far the one that you want to run defiant boosts the pokemon's attack stat sharply when its stats are lowered so if someone tries to lower or uh, Bisharp's any of his stats, any one at all, whether it's through attack, through intimidate, or just like trying to lower speed or something else. Bisharp will boost his attack stat by two stages, which is a lot of attack. Inner focus, the Pokemon intense becomes intensely focused and that protects the Pokemon from flinching. While this is useful in some circumstances, I really don't recommend it over Defiant. Pressure, again, I, I typically hidden abilities are, are better, but this one is not. It puts pressure on the opposing Pokemon and it raises their PP usage. I just don't see it 
like an instance where this is the ability you want to be running on Bisharp. Personally, I think the ability to boost your attack stat sharply is incredibly better than the other two. Bisharp has a base stat total of 490, which is really not that impressive, but his attack stat being at 125, which is exactly what uh, Dragapult's is, is very, very good and is one of the reasons this build works so well. On the left, we have his stats at level 100, and on the right, his stats at level 50. So you're going to maximize his attack and speed. And I personally run Adamant. However, you can run Jolly. I like to run Adamant to maximize the amount of damage output, but if you're wanting to outspeed other Bisharp or other Pokemon in the same speed class, you might want to run Jolly just in case they're, they're also using priority moves. The item that I prefer, which I highly recommend on this just for insurance reasons, is the Focus Sash because he's kind of squishy and can get one shot pretty easily by fire types and ground types and by fighting types. And most Pokemon learn a fighting type move and fire type moves are they run pretty rampant as well. So I like to keep a focus sash on just to protect myself. Um, and it really helps set up the build. The moves are Swords Dance, Sucker Punch, which is a priority plus two dark type move that you can use whenever a Pokemon has chosen to attack you. Iron Head and Psycho Cut. Psycho Cut, uh, it's just a psychic type move. It's, help, it's there to help prevent um, you know, fighting types from getting an advantage because the Sucker Punch won't be as effective on them, but Psycho Cut, as long as you hit first, you're going to kill them. Um, so yeah, so 252 attack, 252 speed, we talked about that. And basically just maximize that attack damage output. Your focus is you're gonna try to get a Sword Dance off and then it doesn't matter if you get knocked to one health or not because you are going to try to Sucker Punch everything to death. Um, Pretty much, you're gonna have to use you can, sucker punch. You'll be able to priority everything. Um, however, if they use something to get non-direct damage on you, which is kind of hard because he can't be poisoned, which is why his steel typing is so useful. So they'd have to get non-direct damage, and that's a little bit difficult to do um, because of his typing. Alternative items, you can run black glasses to try to uh, maximize Sucker Punch damage just a little bit more. However, I still think that that insurance from the Focus Sash is much needed. Alternative moves, uh, Poison Jab, Brick Break. Brick Break is pretty useful. Low Kick, Throat Chop. These are just things you can kind of mix in depending on who your opponent is. If you happen to know what Pokemon they're going to be bringing, then you can just kind of you know, throw these in instead of Psycho Cut or Iron Head. Um, but I really wouldn't switch out Sucker Punch. Finally, this has been a product of Couch Pilot Games. Please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Couch Pilot Games and join us on Facebook, where you can get updates on all things dealing with Couch Pilot Aviation. We also have a Pokemon Draft League Facebook group where we update all of the Pokemon Draft League videos and you can talk to the trainers directly. You can ask them why they went with a specific strategy or you can just shoot the breeze about different builds. Everybody in this community is so friendly and you really have to connect with us because we really like to meet our fans. We like to talk to people. We like to share our knowledge of Pokemon with you guys. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and uh, see you next time.